Well, uh, so what are we going to do today, uh, Cousin P.W.? The same thing we do every day, Melvin. Try to take over the neighborhood. Hey, y'all. Bloodwing here. Back to bring some grumpiness to the internet. And it's time for Grump of the Week again. That segment where I just ramble on about whatever I feel like rambling on about. Uh, might be the typical stuff that I talk about in my other videos, and it might just be something else entirely. It's just whatever I feel like. Uh, but boy, what a week, huh? Been quite a week. Uh, with the elections here in America, the unexpected win for Trump. I mean, I was, and I've mentioned in many other videos, I'm not a very political person. I don't get real heavily involved in politics. And I am way past over it. Right now, if you're an American, you know what I'm talking about. The TV is nothing but advertisements. You can't get on YouTube without political advertisements over your videos. The radio everywhere, to billboards. You can't get away from it. And it starts months prior. I mean, it's been going on since spring at least, probably. And you get pretty tired of it. You just want it over. And that's the way I felt by the time we got to this point. I just wanted it over. Didn't really like either candidate. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I've never registered as either. I always register independent. Rather make up my own mind. I don't want to drink the Kool-Aid of either party. I want to make up my own mind. About who I like. It's what I do when I get my news. You know, I know Fox News leans very heavily right. I know NBC and CNN leans very heavily left. So I watch them both, knowing that the truth is somewhere in the middle. That's that's me. I like to get think for myself and get my own my own truth. Uh, I don't uh, drink the Kool-Aid. That's the reason I try whenever possible, like if I'm reading an article for you guys, to give you the link and to show it on screen so you can read along. Or to give you the link to the videos, you know, not so you can go bully him. Not that <laughs> I have that big a, sub uh, a subscriber base that could, but even if I did, uh, it's not so you can go bully him, because I really don't want you to do that. Go voice your opinion, but don't bully him. But so that it's so that you can see it for yourself and make up your own mind on whether or not I'm telling you the truth. Because I don't even want you to take my word for it. Don't do that. Don't take my word for it. Think for yourself. But I didn't really like either candidate. I've been legal to vote since 1978. And this is by far the ele presidential election with the two most worthless candidates, in my opinion, there's ever been. Wasn't excited about either one. But I definitely did not want Hillary Clinton. You may think that I'm just saying this because now, because it's popular, but I, what I'm telling you, right, what I'm going to tell you right here is true. I remember when her husband, Bill, first run for office against George Bush Sr., Immediately, I disliked Bill Clinton. He just reminded me of like a car salesman, insincere and smarmy, tell you whatever you, you wanted to hear. And from the very first time I saw his wife at that time, and there was no talk of even politics in her life at that point, but still, I remember the first time I seen her and I said to somebody who I don't remember who it was now that was with me at the time, that woman scares me. There were, so there's, she's always scared me. There's, I can't put my finger on it. There's just something when I look at her that tells me she's dangerous. So I did not want her in office. So I guess I was for Trump 
in that respect. But even I, and I would probably lay bets that most ar even ardent Trump supporters probably doubted his chances of being able to become president. So what a shock. You know, I, I watched the, the election results. I was on YouTube bouncing from live stream to live stream. Uh, there was plenty of live streams to choose from where they were watching uh, the election results. I, I went to Dave Collins for a while. I was on Jeff Holliday's. I was just bouncing around wherever I wanted, you know, felt like. If one got a little out of line or a little boring for me, I, I went over to the next one. But as I was watching the states pop up red, red, red all over, I was shocked. I, I really was shocked. And to see Florida go red and Pennsylvania, for Pete's sake, they always vote blue. And other usually blue states that were going red. Kentucky is usually a blue state. It, it was phenomenal. Now, is Trump going to be a good president? I don't know. I have my suspicions. I, I really think he's a clown. I personally think he's an idiot. But we've had idiots in office before that didn't do too half bad. So I'm in that camp of let's wait and see what he does. Maybe he'll do all right. I remember when Reagan first got in office. That was my first election. I voted him, by the way. It was Ronald Reagan's first term. And I knew I didn't want another four years of that idiot peanut farmer, Jimmy Carter, so I voted for Reagan. But even then, I didn't know anything about him, except for what I saw in the movies. I'd seen the movies he was in, some of them. I knew he was an actor. And I'm like, an actor as president? Come on. How good could he be? Turned out to be pretty doggone good president. And an excellent orator. Very good orator. But as I was watching this go on and, and Trump finally got elected and, and when it became evident that she just wasn't going to catch him or, or beat him, you know, I, I seen people in our little corner of YouTube here wailing and gnashing of teeth, not because they wanted Hillary, but because they felt forced to vote for Trump because they didn't want Hillary, but they would have rather voted on the Democratic ticket, the Liberal Party. We all know that a, a, probably a vast majority of the people in this corner of YouTube are of the liberal leaning. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it before. I think maybe I have, but if I haven't, I would probably put myself right of center. On some things, I'm pretty far right. On some things, I'm left. But for the most part, I'm pretty close to center or right of it. Uh, more conservative than liberal, I would think. But, and and I'm not pointing out that difference to show that there's a difference, because I, I get along with an awful lot of YouTubers and a lot of people around here that are of a liberal leaning. I mean, I, I don't think friendships should be made or broken over our political affiliation. I, I think that's ridiculous. And the division we see right now in our country is an example that it is just ridiculous. But I'll get to that in a minute. I seen a lot of people bemoaning that they had to vote for Trump because they didn't want Hillary and that this was all Bernie Sanders' fault because he gave in and gave up and all that. No, it's not. What this was was middle America giving a great big F you to all the progressives that have dominated this country and our politics in this country for the last eight years. That's what that was. We're tired of being called supremacists, racists, rapists, sexists, homophobes. We're sick of it. 
And America voting in Trump like they did in a near landslide was just a big F you in the face of all those regressives. And I could have told him it was going to come. You know, you keep pushing, you keep pushing, you keep insulting a certain faction of people, and especially if they make up a majority of the country, like white people do, sooner or later they're going to push back. People only take it so far. And middle America has just had enough. I think you put, could have put Ronald McDonald the Clown on the Republican ticket, and he might have won against Hillary Clinton. As I look back on it now, I, I was skeptical going into the election, but as I look back at it now and see how things come about and all the states that were usually blue states come, across, come out as red states, uh, I, I think anybody could have beat her. We're, we're just tired of it. So it wouldn't, I can't put all this on Bernie Sanders. Maybe partially his fault, but no. That wasn't the main reason that Hillary lost. People are tired of that kind of politics. They're just tired of it. And, I mean, I've seen people just bemoaning and wailing at Trump and, and oh, this is the end. And, and our country's going to end now. It's, it's been good knowing you, you know. And I even see people posting 1776 to 2016 RIP to USA. Oh, get over it. Get over it. If we can survive Trump presidents like Carter... We can certainly survive Trump. I've seen a lot of bad presidents come and go in my life. A lot of them. Carter's one. I put Bill Clinton as another. Was not a fan of him or his politics or his... The man's a liar and I can't stand a liar. Yes, I know all politicians are liars. Okay, I, I get that. But this... No. Couldn't tolerate it. Didn't like him. Never did. Didn't like Obama. He ruined my health care. Before he pushed his health care through, I had pretty decent insurance through my wife's work. You know, $15 office visits, $10 prescriptions. I have a disease. And I, I need regular checkups. I have not been able to go to the doctor since Obamacare was passed, however long ago that's been, because I cannot afford the deductibles now. That $15 office visit, the $10 prescriptions all went bye-bye, and it became a huge deductible that you have to satisfy before the insurance will even start kicking in anything. And people like me, we can't afford that. I'm all for... Poor people, poorer than me. You know, I consider us to be the working poor. But there's people poorer than us, for sure. And I'm all for them getting affordable insurance. But not at the cost of me losing my coverage. And Obama knew that's what the insurance companies were going to do. They are a business. They're in this for the money, folks. They're not in it for your health or because they're good people. They're in it to make money. And they knew that there was going to be a losing deal covering all these not working welfare people and all of that. It was going to be a losing deal. They had to make it up somewhere. So they took away all those nice benefits that insurance had got around to giving us with the with this, you know, things that I talked about, the affordable office visits and all that. Gone. I can't even afford to take care of myself like I need to with this disease that I have. And, yeah, terrible. I'll never forgive him for that. And we've, you know, and, and you may notice I didn't put Nixon in this, and that could be a discussion for another time. That would probably take us an hour. But it's because I don't consider Nixon as bad a president as, unfortunately, history is going to 
portray him as. Nixon made a huge mistake when he found out that the people involved in Watergate were in fact parts of his staff and so forth. He tried to cover it up. That was his mistake. But he done an awful lot of good. There was trade agreements in our association with China. He got us out of Vietnam for Pete's sake. And that's a that's another uh, grump of the week I may do about the Vietnam area uh, era. Uh, those that only have read about it or seen it on a film or whatever, you, you don't really get what it was like. Yeah, we've got wars going on now, but it was it was nothing like that time. You don't understand the fear, the average male young male person had and he got us out of Vietnam when nobody else seemed to be able to and for that I'll always be grateful to him um but we've had some bad precedents and we've survived them I mean come on we survived George W. Bush one of the biggest laughing stocks <laughs> as a precedent there's ever been why are you so fearful? And secondly, on that note, I think you overestimate the power of the president. Yes, he has some executive powers and everything. But there's a reason that our government is divided into three branches. The executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches. There's a reason. Because they all check and balance the other. You know? The president can't do anything he wants because Congress and Senate and the judicial, the uh, court, the uh, Supreme Court, keep him in check. Congress cannot do anything that they want because the president, with his veto power, and the Supreme Court keep them in check. And the Supreme Court can't do whatever they want to because the other two branches keep them in check. That's how it works. So, Trump won't be able to just willy-nilly do whatever he wants. Stop all this worrying and whining and crying you see all the SJWs doing. And this is one of the things that's worth it to me that Trump did become president. Because the salty tears that all the regressives are crying is just so worth it. It's, it's so funny to watch the breakdowns. You'd think somebody just told them they were going to die of cancer. And and they whine and cry, oh, he's going to put us in concentration camps and the KKK and the Nazis and, oh, stop it. None of that stuff's going to happen. It can't happen. There's too many checks and balances in place for it to happen, even if I thought that's what Trump wanted, and I don't. And you can say, well, it's a Republican Congress you know, it's a red president and a red Congress. That's bad news. Yeah, typically I would say you might have a point there. However, Trump really isn't a Republican. And the Republicans in Congress don't like him. They're not going to work with him the way you think they are, at least not initially. And they've already, this soon after the election, already they're... they're Talking about the wall. Well, here's some other ways we can do this without building an actual, quote, wall, unquote, and whatever. They're already pushing him on his campaign promises to try to change them. I don't think there's going to be the cooperation there, folks, that so many people think there are. Trump cannot institute death squads and, and, and uh, boot-jacked soldiers walk in the streets of America to arrest anybody with differences and, and you know, homosexuals and, and, and all these things. No, he can't do that. He doesn't have that kind of power. So calm down. My gosh. And I've never seen such a bunch of mamby-pamby pussies. I mean, seriously, a bunch of panty waste. This generation, what, what's wrong with it? Is this what happened because people stopped using corporal punishment for their children? Just gave them timeouts? And, and is this what happens because we all get participation trophies? 
I think so. This is what you get. And now we've got a whole entire generation of crybabies. And some of them are in our own little corner of the YouTube here. Now, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to try to call them out because I like these people. I like their content. I'm sub, I'm sub to them. I'm not going to unsub. But I don't agree with the way some of them are reacting to this news. It's just ridiculous. But, <clears throat> yeah, just that alone, the whole election has made this a crazy week. And that hasn't been the only thing that's happened in this week. Uh, lots of things have uh, have gone down. Um, <clears throat> I've already done a video on Angry MGTOW, and a lot of people are looking at him right now. He's kind of like the thing of the week and the uh, uh, a lot of other things. You know, Lacey Green's meltdown on Twitter, and which, by the way, if I didn't mention it, yes, I finally broke down and got twatter. The link's been in, in the description of the videos for the last few days. It's okay. I, I had a really fun argument today on Twitter with, uh, with an SAW, a green-haired chick with a nose ring. Imagine that. <clears throat> Me, Bass Mama, uh, Martius. If you, if you are ever in any live streams for Bass Mama, you know who Martius is. Lone Wolf. Uh, Schmeckel. There was a couple of others. I can't. I'm terrible at names, so I I couldn't remember. But we all got in this argument with this green-haired chick that went on seemed like forever, and she, the cognizant dissonance was so strong with this chick. She had she was being so racist and so ridiculous, and she couldn't even see it. She thought we were the ones being racist and calling her. She accused us of calling her names when no one did, except for her. Uh, so for that, uh, I'm having fun. It's one thing you may not know about me. I love to eat trolls. I've been on the internet since the early to mid-90s. My first modem was a 14.4 modem, if that tells you anything. Yeah, I want to talk about slow. I can remember when I first got a 56K uh, modem, I thought I was just flying. <laughs> flying. And by the way, I, I missed that noise that used to make when you logged into the internet. And those of you a little bit older, you remember what I'm talking about. The, the buzzing and the whistling noise. And it just, you knew you were getting connected. When have, now we just click on an icon and we're there. We're always on. But wasn't that like that back in the earlier days? And I kind of missed that. Maybe it's just a nostalgia. But I've been eating trolls since those early days in the 90s. I'm the guy that if somebody comes to me and says, don't feed the trolls, don't feed the trolls. I'm like, why? I'm really not feeding them. I'm trying to eat them. Because here's what I found out. And I, and I learned this as being a moderator. Back in the 90s, uh, a thing called uh, HTML chat rooms were the big thing. You went in and you chatted and there was all different kinds of chats and so forth. And our social medias take the place of that now. But then it was all like different chat rooms that all had. And each chat room had a, a, a different subject to it or a different feel to it. And there were role playing chat rooms and whatever. But in, in the late uh, mid to late 90s, I was a moderator at one of the major uh, HTML chat sites at the time. And uh, so as a moderator, it was my job to get rid of people that disrupted the room. And i done that. And in the process of doing that, I learned how to handle those kind of people. Maybe for the average person, maybe they shouldn't try to feed the trolls because there's a major mistake they make. And here's the mistake you make, and here's how I approach it. You don't give the trolls hate. You don't give them emotion. That's what they're wanting. I don't understand that, never have. I don't see what, how anybody can get their jollies off of ticking other people off like that and insulting people. And I've even seen trolls go into funeral sites and just diss the people that are loved ones and stuff. I, I don't get that. However, 
I do understand that that's what they want. They want your anger. They want your emotion. That's what they get off on. And if you don't give it to them, you're not feeding them. So you approach them like this. You approach them logically with a real argument because they're not prepared for that. They're just there to take everybody else off and they think that you're going to come at them raging. You So they're not prepared for a logical argument. You turn the tables on them. You know, you troll them. And I don't mean calling them names, oh, you're stupid, you're an ignorant idiot. That's child's play. That's childish stuff. That's not real trolling. No, you bring your A game. You make them think. You bring insults that are so intelligent and provoke thought that it boggles their mind. That's what you do. And you come at them emotionless. You don't come with a bunch of capital letters and exclamation points and, and this, that, and the other. That's what they're wanting. Don't give them that. You come at them emotionless and dry and intelligently and guaranteed each and every time you will turn the tables on them. I got into a troll fight in one of Base Mama's comments section. At the same time, I was in a, a live stream in the chat in the live stream with her and she was just cracking up. I can be pretty savage, but in a calm manner. And so, yeah, there's Fighting Trolls 101, my old blood wing here. Trust me, it works. They're right. Don't feed the trolls in, the, in that, don't give them what they want, but don't feed the trolls shouldn't mean you don't interact with them. You don't have to just ignore them. It's too much fun to eat them for breakfast. And I've enjoyed it for years. So I really do love it. And I get a kick out of it. My son's the same way as I do. We have trolled so many people on different uh, MMOs, you know, games and so forth that we both have played at the same time. It's just hilarious. And, and the two of us work well together. When we would tag team on a troll, oh, Katie bar the door. It was just a glory to the behold. He doesn't care too much for the kind of content I put out right now. Uh, he supports it. He is a subscriber. Won't tell you who it is because don't want anything too personal coming out. But uh, he's not real active in it. He doesn't talk in the comments, and and he's just not into it. And that's okay, you know. Different strokes for different folks. But uh, I've enjoyed it, and I did enjoy that on Twitter. You know, I I did. Had a, had a good time with that argument today. I was having fun. Uh, maybe that makes me weird. I don't know. But I, I do enjoy that. Um, I had planned on talking maybe about the kind of music that I listen to. Because I like to take these talks away from the anti-SJW, anti-feminist stuff that I normally do. But... Uh, I, I, I'm looking over at the timer, and I'm almost at 30 minutes already. Just talked my full head off, and, and I will. I, I will talk your ear off if you give me half a chance. And, but I, I've learned that if these go, if your videos get, go much over 20 minutes, people click off. We live in such an ADD generation. Uh, instant you know everything's got to be now everything has got to be in little quick bites you see all these little jump cuts back and forth and and you know it's got to be busy it's got to be active to hold their attention you know i don't understand that i mean i don't get it how come it's like why they're like that but i understand that it is and so uh it may be part of the reason uh, that I don't have any more subscribers than I do now. And that's okay. I'm not complaining. I appreciate all my subscribers. I really do. And if I never get past what I have now, that's okay. I'll keep doing what I'm doing and keep loving it. I would like to get those next two subscribers and get off of 98 that I've been watching for days. When you have a, sl a small sub count like mine, you notice everyone that comes and everyone that goes. I have lost, I think nine subscribers over the time I've been doing this and, and you notice it when you have a low number like this and, and but I I would like to get in the three digits but you know it, it's not why I'm doing this channel I, I I knew that this channel 
There's too much competition. There's too many great people that do it out there. They're much better than I am. Uh, I'm never going to be as funny as Bering. I'm, I'm never going to be as uh, technically savvy and as entertaining as Undoomed. I'm never going to sound as smart and educated as Kraut and T or Sargon or people like that. I'm just me. And more and more I'm trying to play me. That's the reason earlier in the week I had that perspective. Which, boy, that was something I should have talked about. But um, anybody that follows me knows what happened with that between me and EMI. And they can still bite my butt. But uh, and I'm planning on making that a more... Uh, regular part of my content there'll still be roast videos we'll still have the heifer of the week at the very least but uh, i've been told that one of my strengths is one my voice i think you guys are deaf but my voice and the other is that i speak from the heart and the other is the and then and that it's evident and the other is that i speak from having experience and i and i suppose that i do you, you don't live 56 years without gaining some experience or you shouldn't so uh, i'm probably going to go more that way on uh the first video of the week and we'll still have we'll still have the roast videos you'll still be those and and i'm planning a special what i think will be humorous video here sometime next week um, so yeah, there's some changes in line, but not so drastic that you won't still enjoy what I do. I'm just trying to go toward what works best for me and what my strengths are. So yeah, there was a lot more things I wanted to talk about tonight, but we've run out of time. I'm not going to take any more of your time. It's now over 30 minutes and I'm probably trying your patience. Um, but, uh, so we'll end it here and maybe we'll pick it up next week where i left off with this one and um so as always get out of my yard